and you can see this is normally where the water is way up here okay and that's where the water is now and we're only in June now I've lived out here for 15 years and I've never seen our neighbor's pond this low so I'm gonna to talk to you guys about a few things that you got to keep your eye on because if you don't it could really get you in the trick bag all right today what we're gonna talk about is hay okay a lot of you guys want to get into homesteading or you are homesteading some of you all maybe this is even your first year homesteading this right here is becoming a problem the hay okay uh, Stacy and I have been up here for 15 years and you know we buy hay every year we have 11 acres but we don't really have enough to run our animals you know through the year and then harvest the hay on it and then feed them through the winter with the hay okay so we go outside of the homestead for the hay now when we first got up here 15 years ago hay was running about three four bucks a bale three four dollars a bale uh, we've had some issues there was a little drought there was some problems in Texas you know where they took all of our hay and took it down to Texas and that caused all of the prices and you know pressure to build up here so the hay kind of creeped up you know i remember paying five six bucks and moaning and complaining about it so it's 2023 now and man oh man are we seeing some pressures on the hay we haven't had much rain here i'll show you one of our uh, neighbor's ponds and you can see this is normally where the water is way up here okay and that's where the water is now and we're only in june now I've lived out here for 15 years and I've never seen our neighbor's pond this low. Yeah, I mean that is a lot of shoreline right here. And if you can see over there, there's a lot of shoreline there. And this is a big pond or lake or whatever you want to call it. I think it's like 15 acres or 20 acres, something like that. It's pretty big. I haven't seen this pond this low in 15 years I've been living up here. Now this is an irrigation pond, which means that they take the water out of this pond to irrigate the fields around it. But even still, for 15 years, I've never seen the pond that low. So we're really on a moisture deficit, and all the ponds around here are low. Even if they don't use them for irrigation ponds, our pond is low. So what that does is it causes pressure on the hay. So now, I mean, hold on to your hats. I'm seeing hay for eight to ten dollars to twelve dollars a square bell. That's triple, triple what we paid for it in the past. So, I mean, if you guys are not keeping an eye on this, this hay situation every year, um, it can really put you in the trick bag. And then what also happens? This is what also happens: is people start gathering up their hay. So my suggestion would be to get your hay right now. If you need hay for the winter time for your animals, my suggestion would be to get the hay, secure the hay right now as fast as you can. I'm on the hunt right now for 250 bales and I'm gonna secure them right now because my gut is telling me that the second cut or third cut, they might not even happen. And if they do, it might even be more expensive to get the second and third cutting. I know, man, this is a lot of pressure on the homesteading life. That's why we're always explaining to you guys that if you're making plans to do it, to live off grid, to buy some land or homestead, to just, you know, do more for yourself, do it as fast as you can. Don't make bad decisions. Make sure you're doing your homework, but move in the direction as fast as you can. When we first got out here, right, land was $3,000 an acre, and now you cannot touch a place around here for less than ten thousand dollars an acre that also causes pressure on all of our you know us rural folks because people are moving out here right you guys are figuring it out you're coming out here you're, you're moving out to all these rural places and it's putting pressure on the property values because you're paying more for the property than traditionally it has sold for so then that raises prices on all of us and then our taxes go up. That's why we should not have personal property tax or property tax in America. America, you remember the place that was founded because of taxes? <laughs> and until 1930 something, you can look this stuff up, we didn't even have taxes, no income tax, no property tax. 
And that's one of the fastest ways to socialism, Marxism, fascism, if you go read their literature, is to create a tax. And then just the frog in the pot like we're going through in America right now is just slowly raise the taxes, slowly raise the taxes. And if they don't get you in your generation, you know, tax you off of your property, they'll definitely get your descendants and force them off the property through taxes. So keep an eye on that. If you guys can get involved with your local uh, government and, and start lobbying these tax issues, we're gonna, this is gonna become a problem in America, are these crazy taxes on the houses so the cities can make more money, so they can have more air conditioning and more chairs, so more people can sit inside and rule over you. <laughs> But the topic of the video today is this hay, y'all. Keep an eye on the hay right there, right? These bales here used to go for like $35. Uh, I'm seeing these bales for $80 to $100 now. So all hay prices are up. If you guys feed hay during the wintertime, secure your hay early. Don't drag your feet this year. Because there's some, there's some things that you probably should know. Like if you guys are just fresh on the homestead, uh, if you guys drive around and you see the fields with the hay in it like that, see these big round bales everywhere, what they do is they cut the hay, they cut the grass, it falls down, they come back with a machine that has a bunch of spines on it, and it's called a windrow, and it spins the stuff into one lane, okay? So then maybe you drive by and you see all the lanes of the hay, okay? Then they come by with another machine, and it grabs it, pulls it into the baler, and then they can spit out the round bales, or they spit out the square bales. Now what they have to do with these is they have to let them chill. Okay, because the grass is going to be like fermenting. You guys, if you follow our channel, we do a lot of fermenting. And this grass will start fermenting, basically, and it can get really hot. Okay, so that's why they leave them out into the fields so they can cool off. And then they take them to the barn. Now, if you guys hear stories about people in their barns burning down, a lot of times it's because they rolled up the hay like that or into a square bale. And they didn't let it set outside and kind of relax. Took it to their barn and all the heat from the hay piled up it started combusting you know what i'm saying and then catching fire and that's how you get the fires in your hay barns so you have to let that stuff set for a while that's why i'm real particular on who i buy my hay from because <laughs> there's some yahoos even out here in the country that they don't really even know what they're doing so you got to be careful on where you get your hay to make sure that it's been put up properly Another cool thing is, I'll see if I can catch it, but the hawks, the hawks always sit on top of the hay bales and then they look out over the fields and they get all the field mice and baby rabbits and stuff. I don't know, I don't really see one this morning, but that's normally you'll catch a hawk sitting up here as a perch. I guess a couple of the takeaways of the video today is, you know, to make sure you have a good budget for your hay. I've talked about this before. If, you, if hay is normally, you know, four or five bucks in your area and you know you want to get a hundred bales, that's $500, let's say. If it's five bucks a bale and you want 100 bales, that's $500. Budget for $1,000 for your hay. So that way, if there's a price increase because of weather or supply and demand, you're gonna be okay and your animals aren't gonna suffer, right? So always have an extra buffer in there because the price of hay can just change. Like, it's actually creeping up right now. I, I don't know, we might see more than $10 a bale on the hay, and that is gonna be off the chain for a lot of people and what that does here's the back side of it is it causes people to sell their livestock there's a lot of stories farmers can't feed their cows so they end up taking them to the slaughterhouse early and then you know the prices on the beef go down which hurt all the beef farmers right and then you have less supply in the supply chain because now they're not able to, you know, there's a lot of them that they call out the mothers and everybody, you know, so they don't have more cows being born. So it's just something to think about if you guys are going to start a homestead and maybe even run cows. There's so many things that could affect your bottom line, I guess is what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> All right. So if you guys appreciate this information, make sure you give us a thumbs up um, on the way out. Make sure you subscribe to our channel because a lot of people are getting unsubscribed. And we'll see you guys on the next video. Did you guys know that in the 16, 17, and 1800s, chocolate was consumed as a beverage? There was no such thing as a chocolate candy bar.
Well, we're bringing chocolate tea back to the 21st century. Because it's loaded with antioxidants our body loves, and it's a great source of magnesium that's wonderful for bone and heart health. It's a great addition to your coffee machine or your French press or just along with your favorite sweetener. You can find it at offgridwithdougandstacy.com along with our brand new tea infuser. Simple to use for easy steeping. Cheers!